Uga chaka, 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 uga chaka. I can't fight this feeling deep inside of me. Girl, you just don't realize what you do to me. It's a time now for a brand new hat, because the snapback is not worth all that. That's right. Every week after the Seahawks win, I put on the snap, or excuse me, after a Seahawks game, win or loss, I put on the Seahawks hat, snapback. But you know what? At the same time, I also got this fitted hat from New Era, and I put this on because the Seahawks, with that 41-38 win over the Texans, oh, it's got to upgrade the hats. Got to upgrade the hats. So this one is fitted, and that's right. It's on there, kind of. And it has nothing to do with the fact that I can't find that other hat. Don't even bring it up. The Seahawks beat the Texans 41-38, to uh, and, oh, man. Well, did you doubt it at any time or at any fourth? Seven nothing Texans, and then get this seven seven Earl Thomas. Then it was that was a score, but then hear this part 14 7 Texans. Now, that's a scary thing because the Seahawks hadn't given up any touchdowns in the first quarter at all this season. None, they'd given up three field goals, and those all came in the first three weeks. They haven't even given up a point in the first quarter since week three. It was 14 7, but guess what? 14 14. That game was tied again. But then hear this. Second quarter, Texans take a lead 21 to 14. Now, you're not going to believe this, so don't even – maybe I shouldn't even say it. The Seahawks came, and they tied it up 21-21, okay? Then you go into the half, 21-21, after punt, 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 punt. But then get this part. The Texans take a 24-21 lead. But then I want you to hear this. The Seahawks tied it 24-24 on the next drive. And then the Texans threw an interception. And you're not going to believe what happened next. The Seahawks took the lead at home, 27-24 on a field goal. Two field goals, though, when they could have had touchdowns. And you could be so upset, and people were, because I was on Twitter. They were mad, you know, because they got six points instead of 14. I get that. I was pretty mad about it. We all were thinking to ourselves, man, Russell Wilson could have way more touchdowns. Russell Wilson's not going to end this game with as many touchdowns or as much glory as he needs to get, and that's upsetting. And Russell Wilson, man, why aren't you as good as Deshaun Watson, they were saying probably somewhere, at least one guy, I don't know, up in Bellingham. He probably said that. Then the Texans punted. But then you're not going to believe this, okay, because it was 27-24, but get this. 31-27 Texans? What? Why? Oh, no, this is dreadful. Doom and gloom. Once again, together again. The deadly duo, doom and gloom. You can't stop them. You won't stop them. da 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 But then I want you to hear me out. 34-31, Seahawks took the lead again. Ah, uh, Redemption Island survivor. So wonderful. Let's go home. Let's never worry about that thing that happened. Oh, my God. 38, 34 Texans. I cannot believe it. At least the Seahawks would have a drive, one more drive, right, to go out and get the, the victory on. They're driving. They're down the field. They got this in something. Maybe a bag. Maybe a, a fitted hat. Interception, Russell Wilson. No! Ho -ho! Well, you know, it's just a loss to an AFC team is what everyone said. No, most people were like, well, this run game, are you kidding me? 12 carries for negative one yards at field goals. Tweeted that from Thomas Rawls and Eddie Lacy combined. Oh, brother. Well, it's time, you know, fire Pete Carroll and move on and trade Russell Wilson. Cut Jimmy Graham, that's for sure. We need to get rid of Jimmy Graham. That's you know, but it's still fine. They're four and three. They've been off to worse starts than four and three. Um it or it uses the bucket or else it gets the hose again. But here's the thing. Third and four for the Houston Texans. They just need to get that fourth down. The Seahawks have no timeouts left. They they used up all their timeouts. Third and four stop. Seahawks get the ball back. Russell Wilson to Paul Richardson for 48 yards. 
Russell, uh, for, false start, Reese Adiambo. And we got to give, let's throw up a praise for Reese Adiambo at left tackle, not only for getting beat by Jadavian Clowney, you know, many a time. And I'll, you know, but also for allowing Russell Wilson to get five more yards on his game winning drive. And that's what we got to praise Adiambo for. Let's praise the offensive line for making it tougher on the, you know, on the run game and on the greatest quarterback in Seahawks history. You know, I respect them for, for giving the higher degree of difficulty to Wilson so that he can really win MVP this season. So a round of applause to the offensive line. 19 yards to Tyler Lockett. They rush up to the line of scrimmage. Snap, not snap back, but a snap to Wilson, Wilson to Graham. No one's covering him. Touchdown, Seahawks 41-38. One more drive. Richard Sherman's second interception on Deshaun Watson. Win 41-38. The Seahawks move to 5-2 and two with what is going to be called perhaps the greatest game in CenturyLink history. I mean, you go back four years when the Seahawks and the Texans played, and what happened? They were down 14 points in the fourth quarter, the Seahawks were, and it ended with Richard Sherman, or it tied with Richard Sherman. Pick six on Matt Schaub with a couple minutes left in the game. Unbelievable. Hardly ever seen anything like that before and never really seen anything like this before. The Texans had 509 total yards and lost. The Seahawks had 479 total yards and won. So uh, that's good. Uh, the, the time of possession almost even, and it wasn't for most of the game, but the Seahawks with all of those drives. And Russell Wilson... 452 passing yards, four touchdowns, one interception. His previous career high in passing yards in the regular season was 373. He had that against the Titans this season. That game he had four touchdowns and no interceptions. So this is his second four-touchdown game of the last uh, few weeks. He's got 14 touchdown passes over the last five games. The Seahawks are averaging over, I believe, at this point, because I tweeted something out prior to that touchdown, over 30 points per game in the last five games. So their offense is looking pretty good. Not the problem that, you know, it once was thought to be after their, you know, first couple of games this season, a 17-9 to uh, loss and, uh, to the Green Bay Packers. And, but they've come back, and, and, and now, you know, Russell Wilson's pass rating is over 100 on the season. It's his best start in his career. You can check out the article I wrote just after the game about that with Russell Wilson's stat line. Uh, that says where he was at and in this week two, just a 12 to nine win over the 49ers. But since then, 27 points against the Titans, 46 points against the Colts, 16 points against the Rams, which, you know, is tough uh, in L.A., uh, 24 points against the Giants. And then, of course, 41 points today against the Houston Texans uh, moves them to five and two in first place in the NFC West. The Rams are also five and two. The Seahawks do have that head to head win and they host the Rams uh, in week 15. So an advantage there. Um, but clearly, you know, uh, the Seahawks, even you can, you can look at the negatives here, which is the 38 points allowed at home. Uh, also, you know, I'd said they never allowed a touchdown in the first quarter. Here's a fun fact. I mean, this season, uh, they didn't allow a, a touchdown in the fourth quarter. And they allowed a, a couple of those to Houston as well today. So doing things that they had never done before, really, uh, the Seahawks still managed to win, which has allowed 28 points and four touchdowns. In those two quarters, when the previous in the previous six games, they had done none of that. Uh, so they managed to do that anyway. And like I said, they rushed 21 times for 33 yards, an average of 1.6 yards per carry. A 21-yard rush by Russell Wilson is way more than half of that. Uh, and he has 30 yards. The, the rest of the team, J.D. McKissick, Eddie Lacy, and Thomas Rawls, we'll focus on those three, not Tyler Lockett, who had one carry for negative two yards. But they had 16 carries for five yards. Let me find that snapback hat. I'm going to put it on, and I'm going to get so angry. Uh, Tyler Lockett had six catches for 121 yards. It's his third career 100-yard game. He's had one, you know, in every year so far of his career, so that's, that's something. He knocked that out today. Uh, Paul Richardson, though, six catches for 105 yards, two touchdowns. You know, he had the big touchdowns. He had the big catch on the final drive, 48 yards. Paul Richardson is, a, let's be honest, a phenomenal player. He's also a free agent at the end of the year. He's got five touchdowns on the year. He had two touchdowns in his first three seasons combined, and he's got five touchdowns this year. He had two touchdowns today alone. So Paul Richardson, you know, is an interesting guy. I'm sure off the field too. I, I, if I met him, I'd say I'm interested in what you've got going on. Uh, one catch for 66 yards to Ty, Trey Madden, and that's a play that happened, and that, that was nice. But, you know, I also saw – we, we don't got to talk about the negative things, but, man, that – 
touchdown, that, that Russell Wilson interception, he had Trey Madden right there, wide open. Look there. But if he had done that, we wouldn't have had the funnest play, which was the touchdown to Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham, two touchdowns today, you know, and obviously a lot of disappointment in how many times he scored with the Seahawks and uh, in general in the usage. But, you know, were these the most difficult touchdowns ever? No, but he comes away with two touchdowns. He's utilized. He's got four touchdowns on the season. He had six touchdowns all of last season. We're not even halfway through this season. So that's something, you know, and I think people would be happy if he caught 10 touchdowns uh, during the year, even if he only had, say, 600 yards, especially if Paul Richardson and Tyler Lockett are as productive as they were today. Not needing as much help today from Doug Baldwin, though he has six catches for 54 yards. He was targeted the most still 10 times. Uh, Tanner McAvoy had a 53-yard reception as well, and uh, that's all good and stuff. That's all good and stuff. Uh, and then if you look at the way that they played against the Texans secondarily, and by that I mean the secondary, how they played, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, eight catches for 224 yards and a touchdown. And the Seahawks won. Will Fuller had five catches for 125 yards and two touchdowns. And the Seahawks won. Lamar Miller had 21 carries for 54 yards and a touchdown. And, okay, that's 2.6 yards per carry. But And the Seahawks won. Deshaun Watson went 19 of 30 for 402 yards, four touchdowns, uh, and carried the ball eight times for 67 yards. And the Seahawks won. So all of that being said, you know, the Seahawks allowed 38 points. And they won. So, you know, and Deshaun Watson sacked five times. Uh, all told, you get two of those sacks going to Frank Clark. You get one and a half sacks to Michael Bennett, half sack to Sheldon Richardson, half sack to Justin Coleman. And a half sack to Dwight Freeney. This must be some sort of error. Click, 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 science. Beep, beep, beep. Delete, delete, delete. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Error, error, error. Oh, I guess that's true. Dwight Freeney is a Seahawk, and he had a half sack today uh, right out of the gate. So there's that. Um, you know, leading tackler, K.J. Wright, 14 tackles. One of those for a loss. Bobby Wagner, 12 tackles. Uh, and then you've got the interceptions. Two of them to Richard Sherman, uh, which is a nice thing because he didn't have any interceptions. One of those coming at the last heave ho by Watson, still a good play by Sherman on the play, I believe. I think, you know, and then a nice interception early in the year, earlier in the game. Uh, he had four interceptions all of last season, so he's got two today. It gives him two through seven games, eh, similar pace, but you know, as long as he's shutting him down. Which he didn't do today. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins he had an incredible game. Uh, and Will Fuller he also had a great game. So, you know, the Seahawks secondary was not shutting people down. Earl Thomas, you know, he comes away with that pick six. But obviously, too, in general, uh, the Seahawks secondary and Earl Thomas. Look, you got to give credit to the fact that Earl, uh, Deshaun Watson is, you know, one of the best, I think, young players in the NFL for sure. Uh, was one of my favorite players going into this year as far as the rookies were going. And has been, you know, he's got 19 touchdowns through seven games. That's insane. Uh, you know, it's 19 touchdowns leads the NFL in scoring. And if you consider that Russell Wilson has tied, you know, he's got a tie with Peyton Manning, 26 rookie passing touchdowns. That's the record for rookies, 26. Watson's got 19. He didn't even start the first game. Uh, so here he is now with 19 of those. Very good player, but he threw three interceptions. And I think they were all pretty savvy plays by the Seattle Seahawks. Obviously, again, the last one was a desperation attempt, but still. And if you go back uh, to 1970, we're looking at uh, just Russell Wilson, 452 yards, four touchdowns. How many guys have done that? Uh, you've got just 30 up to this point. And out of those 30 of guys that have at least 452 yards or 450 yards uh, and four touchdowns, you can include Eli Manning, but how many of them have fewer than two interceptions? Uh, just about half of them. So, you know, he's in pretty exclusive company as far as all-time games go. And, excuse me, it's this uh, store-bought seltzer water that's making me burp again. Uh, how many of those were wins for those guys, too? Less than you would think. So a really great game for, for Russell Wilson and a great game for Deshaun Watson, but, uh, you know, just not great enough. Sorry, Deshaun. Not good enough. Uh, and but you, good for you for you guys, Houston Texans. You gave it a go, uh, and it didn't work out. And for the Seahawks, it did work out. So I'll take that. 
uh, the Seahawks in first place in the NFC West. You break down the uh, the whole playoff standings in the NFC, and the Seahawks right now, they get a stand up as the number four seed, uh, which is better than, you know, not being that. So, but it's very close right now. So, okay, how if you're looking at the NFC, Eagles win again. They're seven and one, but the Eagles, either way, they have to come to Seattle this year and play the Seahawks. And so if the Seahawks keep pace in every other game with Philadelphia, then they just have to beat Philadelphia at home in order to get the upper hand in that head to head. So that's something they've got an advantage in the Minnesota Vikings at six and two. They beat the Browns. Listen, I beat the Browns. I didn't even, I don't even, I'm not even a football team. I'm not even an NFL team. I'm not a professional, but I did it on last Thursday. I beat the Browns 17 to six. I'm not even a professional football team. And they did that. So with Case Keenum and, and all this kind of nonsense, yes, the Vikings are six and two. The Saints are five and two. Not that I thought they looked great today against the Chicago Bears. So there's that, you know, and the Saints, they're a surprise to be where they are right now. The Seahawks are not, a, I don't think they're a surprise to be with, here where they are right now. I think they're a, the Seahawks are a surprise that they, you know, have some not really played like we expect them to play. We expect the, play, the Seahawks to be a rushing team, and they're definitely not that. Uh, we expect them to be a Russian team, but they are actually from Seattle, which is American. And, uh, you know, we expect them to be a rush in team because their favorite movie was supposed to be Matthew Perry and Selma Hayek's Fool's Rush In. But in fact, it's failure to launch with Matthew McConaughey. So they're not what you expect them to be. They're not supposed to allow 14 points in the first quarter and 14 points in the fourth quarter. They're not supposed to do that at all. And they're definitely not supposed to do that and win, but they did that. They're not supposed to, you know, rush for three yards outside of Russell Wilson and win, and they did that. They're not supposed to be led by Paul Richardson and Tyler Lockett in receiving, but they did, and they won. So there's that. And they're not supposed to have Dwight Freeney on the team because Dwight Freeney retired, I think, a decade ago. So he's somehow playing for the Seahawks. He retired nine years before Marshawn Lynch retired, and he's playing for the Seahawks. So take that what you will. Uh, they're not supposed to have Earl Thomas and Richard Sherman have gigantic lapses in their, you know, Hall of Fame level secondary play and win, and they did that. So it's interesting for them to get a win when they weren't supposed to and to do things they're not supposed to do. Uh, so they're very unpredictable right now, and yet at the same time, five and two, and a holder of first place in the NFC West, and, you know, perhaps just a game or two, a week or two, a, a month or two, uh, a year or two away from being in first place. If it takes two years for them to be in first place in 2017, I'll take it. If it takes five years for them to win the upcoming Super Bowl that's a few months from now, if it takes them five years to win the Super Bowl that's three months from now, I'll take it. I'll take that, I guess. Uh, so then when you look ahead to the Seahawks, little thing link we call a season, next week it's Washington. Now, Washington, they uh, have to come to Seattle. So there's a win in the wash. You know, there's a wash in the win column. Uh, you know, and – they lost today 33-19 to to the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas ain't got no defense, so they only put up 19 points, and I know that one of those touchdowns came very late in the game. So not that's something to think about is that maybe their offense isn't very good. You know, no Deshaun Watson's over here. You know, Kirk Cousins was playing pretty, is playing pretty well. But they also can't really run the ball. 15 carries, 49 yards they had against Dallas today. They lose. Uh, Jameson Crowder, nine catches, 23 yards. Uh, so, you know, in general, Washington at three and four, it's a, an under 500 team coming in next week. The week after that, they go to Arizona. Cardinals ain't. I mean, I know that I beat the Browns on Thursday, and I'm not even a professional football team. But I have better odds to win the Super Bowl than the Arizona Cardinals do. And I'm not a professional football team. I'm not. I do have a stadium. Uh, I've got naming rights with Alberto Ob Beef Jerky. I can't deny that. Okay? I do have a stadium with naming rights. Um, I, I, I've been, you know, I've been scolding people about kneeling. And I'm not even an owner. I mean, going around on the streets, you know, someone was tying their shoes, I think, but I had to scold them for it because I 
just felt like I was an NFL owner and then I was a professional football team. But then I had to look it up and I realized I'm not a professional football team. And yet still, I did look down at the newspaper yesterday and it said I had better odds to win the Super Bowl in the Arizona Cardinals. I don't get it, but it happened. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons are the week after that, and that's at home. So that's going to be perhaps the next bigger test. If the Seahawks can win the next two games, then they'll be 7-2, and two, and that's a fact. You know, I don't mean to be cocky, but I can take five and two and add two to five. And I can tell you it's seven and two. So if they can be seven and two, then they can play the Atlanta Falcons. Then after that, it's at San Francisco, and then it's the game against Philadelphia. Then we can take it all from there. But let's say the Seahawks just win three of their next four games. Then they'll be eight and three after 11 games. That sounds pretty good to me. The LA Rams, they are five and two right now. They're taking a break. Like, I don't even know what to say about that. Because the LA Rams, like, everyone else out there, like, the Seahawks are out there that today they were fighting. They were competing. Like, they were trying something. And, and you know, and they won. But they also, it was hard fought. Like, they had to put in, like, effort. And the, the Rams today were like, you know what? We're not even going to play this week. And I think that's, I think that's trash, dude. Like, I just think that's trash to not even compete to like everyone out there is trying to compete and they're giving it their all and you're not even giving it any, like I'm, I'm not a professional football team. I don't even know how to keep on, you know, saying this. I had to go, I did have to go to London uh, two weeks ago uh, and, and play in what my body clock was, you know, 6 a.m. But I had to play anyway um, in London and I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't wearing uniforms. I didn't have pads on. I wasn't, there isn't a win column anywhere, but I had to do it. Uh, and I'm not a professional football team, but, but I did have to do that. Okay. I mean, yes, technically um, I was ranked 36th in Forbes list of best professional sports teams in America, which I don't get cause I'm not a professional football team, but that is something that happened. And so if you take that fact, which is, a, it is a fact, um, even though I'm not a football team, I would at least play. I would. I, I played today. I, I'm not a professional football team, but I played today. The Rams took the week off, and they were like, "Bye." And I was like, "Okay, you're not even gonna compete. Like everyone out here is competing, and you think it's okay to just like take a bye week? Like that's so messed up." But okay, fine. Do what you got to do, and, and that's what the Rams did today. Uh, so I guess they're gonna come back next week. And I don't know why we're letting him back into the NFL if they're not going to compete. But uh, and then they get the, at the New York Giants, and then they host the Houston Texans. Good luck. Good luck against Deshaun Watson because he's pretty good. And the, I, I think that the only way you can beat him is if you have Russell Wilson. And if you don't have Russell Wilson, uh, if you want to get Russell Wilson, good luck. I mean, I don't have any sources inside of the Seahawks. And I, I mean, I did field calls from John Schneider and try to make trades and we almost came to a trade. I was going to give him a third round pick, even though I'm not a professional football team. Um, but I can tell you this, he's not trading Russell Wilson. He, and he's not, I don't care what the rumors say. The Seahawks are not trading Russell Wilson to the LA Rams tomorrow in order for them to try and beat the Houston Texans in two weeks. I don't care how many times that rumor is printed because it's been printed over and over and over again that Russell Wilson is on the verge of being traded to the Rams uh, tomorrow. And I didn't start it and I didn't write it. And I think it's kind of bullshit. I hope that they take it off the internet, but whatever. So then how can the Rams expect to beat the Giants, the Texans, then they go to Minnesota, then the Saints, then they go to Arizona, then they host the Eagles, then they go to Seattle, then they go to Tennessee. I'm going to say this. This is your reward for taking this long, you know, extended break of a bye week. Um, one, two, three, five of your next eight games are on the road. So, uh, you know, good luck with that, I guess. That's what you get for taking breaks. I don't take breaks. I'm not a professional football team, um, but you do. And that's you. And I appreciate that about you um, because that's why the Rams haven't been to the playoffs in, you know, a while uh so that's it you know the seahawks pull out the uh the good old dub that good old v the victory they pull out their v card you know v card seahawks that's right the seahawks got their v card 
uh, for victory and uh, win this one, 41 to 38, and prove to five and two, first place NFC West. Russell Wilson, all time great stats. Russell Wilson, all time great start. Russell Wilson, all time great game. Uh, one of the all time great games of all time was won by an all time team, the Seahawks. Um, and that's all the time that we have today for Facebook Live. Uh, this pre and post, and somebody watched this, which is crazy.